Hello, my name is Jim, and we're going to be talking about this DeWalt corded hammer drill today on Manjaro. This is the DeWalt DWD 520 hammer drill. So it's a corded hammer drill, like I mentioned, and that might seem like a bit of a dinosaur these days. And to be honest, it kind of is. It's a pretty old design of a tool. It's, uh, you can tell by the amount of black overmolding that it has, the, the rubberized coating that they add to it. It's only got this one piece on the back here. This part over here is actually just a sticker that's stuck on. On the newer tools, this would all be covered in the black overmolding. This would just be uh, part of the black overmolding, and this, would be, this yellow part would be part of the plastic that's underneath there. One of the other things that you'll notice on this is that it has a keyed chuck. So almost all cordless tools, almost all drills these days have keyless chucks. So instead of having a keyless chuck, you have to use this chuck key to tighten down the chuck when you put a new drill bit in. It's a bit of a pain, and that's why keyless chucks exist now. The thought, though, is that particularly for a hammer drill, you can't get a keyless chuck as tight as you can with a keyed chuck. Now, that used to be the case. It used to be that the, the first generation keyless chucks weren't very good, and you couldn't get them really tight. You couldn't get them to really clamp down on the bits well enough, particularly for something like a hammer drill. These days, though, those keyless chucks are really good, and I think they can get down just uh, plenty tight enough for any sort of hammer drills. I don't think you really need a keyed chuck these days, but you can get it really tight if you're doing something where that might end up slipping. One of the other nice features about this um, hammer drill here is that it's got this adjustable handle on it. That's good because this thing puts out a ton of torque. So that is one of the very nice things about corded tools. They have a ton of power. Whether they have more power than some of the top of the line cordless tools, that's something we're gonna take a look at. Um, I don't think that's the case. The cordless tools now have started to get really powerful batteries and started to put out a ton of power with the brushless motors, but this guy does put out a ton of power as well. So it's really useful for doing things like hole saws, very large holes with a spade bit, and also, because it's a hammer drill, drilling in masonry, cement, concrete, that sort of thing. So let's take a look at some of the features on it, and then we'll go and make some holes. First thing I wanna talk about is this handle here. So this handle goes over the top here, and there's actually some keyed tabs on the bottom here, and they lock into the, the position of the handle, and then you can crank this down, keeps it nice and tight, but you get a really good handle on uh, the drill and keep it under control. It also has a little hole up here for a depth guide. I've actually lost the rod for it, but it's just a six millimeter steel rod, slides in there, and then when you tighten it, it clamps down on that rod, and that will let you go to a specified depth. depth. That's actually really useful, so you don't have to over drill holes if you're drilling in concrete and you know, for anchors or things, you can set it to right, the right depth and you don't have to worry about wasting time drilling too deep. Or if you're trying to make sure you don't go through into another part or something like that, it can be very useful for that as well. I really like that. There's not much else to this drill. drill. It's got a typical little lever switch here. It feels kind of mushy. It can kind of get stuck in a middle position, which is kind of irritating. Um, it's not like a corded tool where sometimes you might want to put it in the middle position so it doesn't accidentally go off in your tool bag. It's not going to be plugged in. It's not going to go off. So it's got the key, the chuck key. It's on a little rubber strap so that it, you don't lose it, which is very convenient. Um, it does mean that you have to unplug it to change the bit, which is something you're supposed to do anyway because you don't want to accidentally um, pull the trigger while the chuck key is in there. It'll go flying out and could hit somebody. So it's kind of a double-edged sword there. But it is nice that you're not going to lose that. So that's pretty much all there is of the drill. Um, one thing I will note is that it's quite heavy and it's quite large. So if we take a look here at one of the, the new DeWalt modern drills, you can see just how much smaller this is. And this puts out almost as much torque as this guy here. So if you're trying to get into tight places, this guy's not gonna work for you. This cordless one is a whole ton smaller than this guy here. It's also quite a bit heavier than this guy here. So if you're gonna be using it all day, something else to consider. Although with the handle on it, you know, you do have two hands on it, it might not be that big a deal. I've got chucked up here an inch and a half spade bit. So one of the benefits of this drill is that it spins really fast. It goes about 3,500 RPMs. Most cordless tools do about half that. They usually go about 16, 1650, maybe 1700 or 1800 RPMs. So having that really nice, that really fast speed is gonna make it cut a lot better. It's probably too much for a bit this fast. It does have a slower speed that I could put it on. That one goes about 1200 RPMs. We're gonna try it on the, the fast speed here. It's gonna be pretty hard to control, but it does have this nice handle so that should make things pretty easily. So I've just got a scrap of two by four tucked up here. Um, it's obviously, you wouldn't normally just have a piece of two by four hanging out. You're usually gonna be drilling this in a wall or something like that. But just for demonstration purposes, we'll take a shot at it like this. Okay, 
Yeah, so you can see it went through that no problem very quickly. It really takes out a huge amount of material in a short time period. One of the things you notice there at the end as I was pulling out, I actually accidentally pulled the trigger a little bit more. Um, DeWalt has this big trigger on here. They call it a two finger trigger that, and they say that it gives more control. I usually actually hold it up here like this and then I put these two fingers on it. But I feel like that actually gives me less control. I would rather not have that second finger on there. It makes it a little more difficult to control. I do like that you can hold this up here like this though. Then of course you don't really have a really good way to hold the trigger, but there's kind of a, a slot here to hold that. And then you can push real nice and hard on the drill bit. You're in line with it. So that works pretty well. So let's try a couple other drill bits here and see how they go. For comparison's sake, I've got that same bit in here. This is my cordless drill. It's also got a nice handle on it. We'll try it. It's got a fresh five amp hour battery in it. We'll see how fast that goes. It's also gonna be in the two speed. Also gets through there no problem, but it does take quite a bit longer. I've got one of these speed bore bits in here now. It's got a little screw on the front that pulls the bit into the wood, so it goes really quickly. You don't have to push so hard on it because that screw is pulling it in there. However, they can put out a huge amount of torque and can be quite difficult to control. I'm going to turn it down to the slower speed here just so it doesn't rip it right out of my hands here. We'll take a shot with that. So you can see I had no problem with that. These aren't really meant to be used in a drill like this, really meant to be used in like a whole hog, something that goes a lot slower than this does, but cut it, no problem. Had plenty of power for it, and with the two handles, I could control it pretty well. Now that might be a little tricky if you're in kind of a weird situation, particularly on top of a ladder. That's one thing to be very careful with a, a big, powerful drill. On top of a ladder, if you're holding the drill and it gets bound up or something, it can easily rip it out of your hands or rip you off the ladder. So you gotta be pretty careful with that. Next up, I'm going to use one of my least favorite types of drills. This is a hole saw. So it's got a little bit of regular twist drill on the side and then teeth around the outside to actually cut a very large hole. This is about four and a, uh, four and a quarter inch diameter hole. The problem with these is as it starts to cut, the sawdust builds, builds up in the saw kerf around here. It has no place to go. There's no like relief cuts or anything on here. So the sawdust gets, builds up in there and they can start to bind and stuff and can be a real pain. You get, sometimes you can kind of rock them to knock the sawdust out. So they're kind of a pain to use. We'll try it out in this drill, see if it is any better in here. Now, I'm gonna also show you how to change a bit in here in case you're not familiar with how a keyed chuck works. So you take the key, I gotta unplug it to take the key off. You stick it in one of these little holes and then there's little teeth on the key that engage with the teeth on the chuck, kind of like a gear. And you just spin it around and that spins this part here and loosens this up. So then we're gonna open this up pretty big because this has a pretty big arbor on the end of here. So put that in there. Then we just tighten that down by hand until it's pretty tight. And then you use the key to tighten it the rest of the way. Now this chuck has three holes that you can put the key in. It's pretty typical. And you really wanna do it on at least two, usually three, it'd be better to, to tighten up, make sure it's tightened evenly all the way around. All right, with that, I'll plug it in. We'll make a taste cut here. This is just some plywood, just a scrap piece of plywood. Hopefully it's all right. I've got it kind of sketchily clamped here, so hopefully I can cut it without a problem. I've got it in the slow speed for this as well. So you can see it cut it no problem. It is a bit of a handful to hold on to. Certainly want to be, wouldn't want to be doing something like this you know, above your head or without the handle on here like that. It would be pretty tricky, probably even a little bit dangerous. So this is also a hammer drill. So let's try it out in some masonry here. So I've got a typical kind of concrete block that I'll, we'll make a couple holes in. I've got a 5 30 seconds inch diameter bit in here, which is pretty small, but it's something you might use for anchors, you know, masonry type screw anchors that you would want to be drilling in here. Keep in mind that a hammer drill is kind of the baby of the masonry drilling type tools. You know, that beyond that, you've got rotary hammers and demolition hammers and things that are meant to drill much bigger, uh, bigger holes in masonry. This obviously just has a regular chuck on it. It doesn't have a fancier chuck for some of those bigger bits, but it should work just fine for this sort of thing. So let's give it a shot. So you can see it makes no problem that goes through that really easily. Let's try a little bigger diameter bit. Okay, this is a 3 8 inch diameter bit in here now. This is probably about as big as you want to be drilling with this sort of hammer drill style drill. 
bigger than that, you probably want a rotary hammer or something else to do it. So let's take a shot at this. You can see it has no problem with that as well. Just for fun, let's try it with a one inch diameter bit. This is really way too big a bit for this drill. Let's give it a shot and see how it goes. That actually went you know, perfectly well, no problems there. Keep in mind with that one inch diameter hole here, this is a the concrete block is what they call it now, but it used to be called a center block. It's probably the easiest masonry to drill through. The concrete is not, it's kind of pressed into shape. It's not poured like this. So it's fairly kind of foamy almost of a concrete. A uh, poured concrete wall is gonna be a lot more difficult. And then the other thing that we're gonna try right now is a masonry brick which will be a lot more difficult as well. Now this brick is just one I grabbed from Lowe's the other day. Um, so they're pretty new bricks and it's very ceramic-y feeling. So it's very hard. Bricks that are a little bit older are gonna be a lot easier to drill into than this guy here. So let's give this a shot. This is that same 5 30 seconds bit that I started off with on the center block. So you can see it took a lot longer to do that, but it did make it through without too much difficulty. Conclusion time. What do I think of this guy? Well, it goes a lot faster than a regular cordless drill, so that's pretty beneficial. If you've got a whole lot of holes to drill, you can go a lot quicker when it's spinning twice as fast. That being said though, having a cord is a pain. Having a keyed chuck is also a pain. I've forgotten how irritating it is to change bits in a keyed chuck before I had to swap all the bits here. Usually I only use this drill you know, once in a while and so I'm not, it's not that big a deal, but if you're gonna use this every day, that keyed chuck's a pain to use. But it does hold onto those bits a little bit tighter. I don't think that's really that big a deal. The other thing is this, bit, this drill is huge compared to most of the modern cordless drills. It's a lot bigger and it's a lot heavier, so you're not gonna be able to get into like a stud bay very easily. That may be an issue, maybe not an issue. It depends on what you're using it for. It's also a lot heavier if you're trying to drill holes over your head or something. It's going to be a lot more difficult. But it is a lot faster, and it does have the benefit that you're not going to run out of power. Now, of course, you've got that drawback of you always got the cord around you. If you're at a job site, you don't have power. It's going to be a bummer. So that can be a little bit of an issue. So would I get this as my first drill? Certainly not. Now, if I had a whole lot of production to do, particularly if it's in masonry, yeah, then I might consider something like this. But certainly not as your first drill. The only exception that might be is if you want a drill that's gonna last basically forever. You know, this drill has no, you know, it's got parts that are gonna wear out, but it's not like the batteries. Batteries are only gonna last a couple of years, maybe five, 10 years. They're gonna end up, uh, you know, needing to be replaced at that point. There may be new batteries on the market at that point. This drill, I think I've had it for 12 years already and it's still the same drill they sell now. And there's no reason it shouldn't keep going on just fine forever. So that's one benefit. Um, you're not gonna have to worry about replacing the batteries or you know, ha having a new battery system come out. It's, it's not gonna be compatible with. So the only kind of caveat I would say on that. All in all though, if you want a fast drill, this is definitely a good choice. Otherwise I'd skip it and go with a cordless drill. Thanks for watching. If you disagree, if you know something else that this is super useful for, let me know in the comments below.